I know there's a lot of Mountain Dew fans out there. I'm not picking a fight with you or the company. And in any event, I'm not the person to take advice from. I come from a country that puts fries on bread. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to fizzy drinks or pop or soda or canned tooth decay. Of course, growing up in Britain, I'm no stranger to bad teeth, nor to the fact that both countries know a thing or two about soda. For its part, Britain revels in some of its own brands, but there are own brands and then there are own brands. And then, of course, Britain has brands of soda from the very country I've now lived in for 12 years. And this includes some of the big names like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, Fanta, and Listerine mouthwash. What do you mean? Of course we can include it. Listerine mouthwash is readily available all across the UK. But there are certain sodas, and by sodas I'm using the broad definition of carbonated beverage, that America is either keeping to itself or hadn't had the courtesy to introduce me to them while I lived in Britain. In other words, this video is all about those soda brands that I only encountered after moving to America. One of the very first drinks that I had in the United States of America after the tequila was a bottle of Mr. Pibb. Mr. Pibb, thought I, isn't that interesting? A drink with a person's name and title in the title. Where have I seen that before? Well, it turns out that Mr. Pibb is Coca-Cola's answer to Dr. Pepper. In fact, I was reading today that when it first launched, it did so under the name of Peppo, prompting Dr. Pepper to sue Coca-Cola for trademark infringement. Funnily enough, no such lawsuit was brought forth by the similarly named Pepto-Bismol, which also tastes like medicine. And I like how Dr. Pepper is somehow okay with Mr. Pibb, which sounds like Dr. Pepper's less qualified cousin. That said, Dr. Pepper, to which I was once horribly addicted, enjoys a successful life in Britain, whereas Mr. Pibb was presumably refused entry. When it comes to UK immigration, it pays to have a doctorate. But what makes my first encounter with Mr. Pibb intriguing is that it was discontinued seven years before I moved to the United States. So how did you do that then, Lawrence? Asks Uncle Toby. Was it time travel? Not on this occasion. First of all, upon its discontinuation, it was rebranded as Pib Extra. But that doesn't make any sense to me because I distinctly remember being introduced to a Mr. Pib and no, there were no handshakes because the fizz would have gone everywhere. Well, apparently Mr. Pib was and is still in circulation in some states. Now, of course, it's entirely possible that in 2020, my current state of Illinois and my previous state of Indiana now only stock Pib Extra, but I wouldn't know. Because, and this is an important piece of information, I gave up soda in 2014. And I also don't obsess over the branding of fizzy drinks until today. Day. That said, while you won't find a drink with a pib in it in most places in the world, most places in the world aren't Japan. From Hero to Coke Zero, this is one of those Coca-Cola brands with which I wasn't familiar until I moved to Indiana. And really that's just down to timing, something ironically that YouTube user Prince William Official thinks I have zero of. Because in the United States, Coke Zero was launched just a couple of years before I moved here. And when I moved here, the United Kingdom, while by no means having zero Coke, had zero Coke Zeros. In the intervening years, this has apparently changed. So for once, both my British and American viewers know what I'm talking about. Actually, second thoughts, don't comment on that. So what is Coke Zero? Well, it's basically Coca-Cola that claims to be sugar-free. Essentially, it's the drink I thought I was making at the age of nine when I poured Coca-Cola through a sieve to extract all the sugar. It just ended up tasting like liquid metal cough drops. No matter where you look, it seems like every single soft drink has its cheap alternative knockoff. Dr. Pepper has Mr. Pibb, Pepsi has Diet Pepsi, and in America, Coca-Cola has RC Cola. And I say in America, but it turns out that this alternative is available in 67 other countries, none of which are the United Kingdom. On the one hand, this is ironic because the letters RC stand for Royal Crown. On the other, it would be difficult to market this drink in Britain because RC sounds like RC. As for the drink itself, it did originate in the United States, and what does it taste like? Well, have you had Coca-Cola? It's like somebody took that and disguised it with a comedy mustache. It's basically one of those drinks that gets relegated to being a chaser, which in some ways can be beneficial for that drink because you get so plastered you think it's amazing. 
and then you tell everybody on Twitter about it at 4 a.m. Now, I've just realized it is possible that if you're reading my tweets at that time of the morning, you might be the sort of person that consumes this. My first job in the United States was working as a call center agent. And for anybody that doesn't know, working in a call center is all about metrics. So how many daily calls are you taking? How frequently are you resolving your customer's issue? And good grief, Josh is taking his ninth toilet break. But there's one metric that stood out to me more than most, the amount of staff members drinking something called Monster Energy. What are all of these tins with what looks like a graffitied version of the letter M? Is this a nightmare version of McDonald's? So I inquired and the general consensus seemed to be that this was an awesome alternative to coffee. The problem was, people were so busy focused on the energy part, they forgot that it also turns you into a monster. It's like most energy drinks. When I lived in the UK, I was addicted to Red Bull because it did give me a buzz. It did give me an energy surge for two hours. And then the crash sets in. And speaking of crashes, not even the 2008 recession could stop Monster from taking over Britain. Now it does sound like a nightmare. The point is, Monster, while it hasn't actually taken over Britain, does now have a presence there. And for anybody wondering, this is probably helped in large part by the fact that Monster sponsors just about every extreme sport under the sun. Britain, for its part, is more than happy to consume these extreme sports as well as green things, as evidenced by this. Well, that was a weird segue, Lawrence. I thought Mountain Dew wasn't available in Britain, hence its inclusion in your thumbnail. And to Uncle Toby, who's probably writing that as we speak, I say, fair point and shut up, because caveats are a chief ingredient of this very entry. Firstly, let me just state that my very first encounter with Mountain Dew, or as Hoosiers call it, Mountain Dew, or just do, was very early on in my time living in Indiana, and how best to describe it, I'm not really sure. But taste vaguely, but not strongly, of lemon and or lime. It was sort of middle of the road, or should we say, center of the mountain trail. It was neither the reason I gave up pop, nor an incentive to go back to it. It's just there. I know there's a lot of Mountain Dew fans out there. I'm not picking a fight with you or the company. And in any event, I'm not the person to take advice from. I come from a country that puts fries on bread. But I also come from a country I discovered today that has flirted with Mountain Dew. Firstly, it was apparently released in the United Kingdom in 1996, presumably to little fanfare, because it was phased out in 1998. However, I was today years old when I discovered that a different tasting drink by the name of Mountain Dew has been available in the UK since 2010. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should have that version of Mountain Dew shipped over here so I can compare the two, thus lifting temporarily my abstinence from soda pop. If you like what you see here and you're specifically into pictures of my cat, why not follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US? And as ever, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. A Coca-Cola company size thank you to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron and support this channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Anyone who becomes a patron will get access to my secret live stream and anyone who pledges $5 or more a month will be able to hear some of the highly acclaimed music that I've been composing, highly acclaimed by my mum. Till next time, cheers.